the model that we're looking at right now is a simple test and demonstration model to show Lorenz's capability on child's law simulation. What you see is a rectangle with a uniform electric field in it. And the way this is set up is by applying voltage and Neumann boundary conditions. The two pink segments that you see create a, an electric field between two voltages and the blue segments correspond to dv dn equals zero forcing the electric field to be parallel to those segments. Hence what you arrive at is a completely uniform electric field. What Child's Law predicts for you is what will happen when you start putting a charge carrying beam into a structure like this. And although Child's Law itself is an idealization that doesn't exist in real models, it provides a very important limiting case for studying a lot of real models. The theory for Child's Law can be found in your Lorentz manual. And what you see is that the amount of current that can pass through a device like this before you reach an excessive value that the space charge reverses the electric field and prevents any more electrons from flowing. That current density is given by looking some distance away from the starting position and with a scaling factor taking the voltage to the three halves at that distance and dividing by the distance squared. That's why the child's law is sometimes known as the three halves power law. This model then represents a, a perfectly analytic test case and the results can be compared directly with a spreadsheet that has been set up. This spreadsheet takes the voltages and distances entered into the Lorentz model and predicts the current density, then multiplying by the length into the screen, it predicts the current that it should be observed. That current being 103.147, etc. amps. Within Lorentz then, the simulation is going to be run, first of all, by setting up an emitter. These green arrows represent emission points at one side of the test model. And each arrow is then going to have a current density calculated on it from the electric field, which will then produce a current flow. <coughs> So from those emission points, we can define an emission. So we have emission number one from emitter number one. We specify that it's going to be a child's law emission. What will happen is that the rays will launch and it will produce um, a current in the area, which then results in a charge. The problem is then resolved with that charge present and the process is repeated. It is repeated until some convergence conditions are met. The convergence condition chosen here is that the current density being pumped into the device has to be stable within one part in a thousand. So therefore our theoretical answer of 103 should be accurate to that many decimal places, but not necessarily beyond when we look at the final predicted current. In order to run the simulation, the model is set up with two-dimensional elements. We can deposit space charge in two ways with Lorentz from the beam. We can deposit it into either elements or deposit it along the rays themselves. This model is set up to use elements. And because the most critical area is in the vicinity of the emission point, 
the element refine feature is being used to make the elements particularly small around it, those points. So we can go ahead and launch the emission. <clears throat> 